they are dismantling the sleeping middle class. More and more people are becoming poor. We are their cattle. We are being bred for slavery. The revolution. We are in a world in which the vast majority of the population is in an amnesic state. They are in a hypnotic trance because they have been implanted with false um, information about themselves and the world and the world ever since they arrived. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor and the underclass are growing. The run. So where's the one place you can go and tell your version of the truth, rail against liars, fakes and propagandists with your own unique propaganda, sign your name to it and let the whole world know how you feel? That's right, the internet. Perhaps responsible for the most substantial shifts in culture in the last several decades. There's so much freedom and potential on the World Wide Web that one is barely able to get one's head around it. Who in their right mind would dare to regulate or charge websites to be on the internet? Who would dare to rain on a parade so fantastic that many of us would not know what to do without our high-speed connection and our lives on the internet? Actually, some very powerful forces. The people are awake, and so Northcom and Homeland Security are mirroring uh, what's happening uh, in England, Australia, and Italy, and coming in with net surveillance and an attempt to set up Internet 2 to restrict free speech. Time magazine is calling for restricting free speech right now. So the unthinkable is happening. The so-called Western democracies are falling into Hitlerian or almost uh, Leninist censorship and tyranny. Well, the federal government is planning to make internet censorship compulsory for all Australians. Now, controversial websites on euthanasia and anorexia could be banned. This would put our level of net censorship in the same league as China, Cuba, Iran and North Korea. And users will not be able to opt out of the proposed national internet filter. There's about to be a new pair of eyes watching over what internet users in the US are doing online. The country's new cyber czar is supposed to protect the nation's networks from attack, but it'll also give the White House unprecedented surveillance access over the internet. The Cyber Security Act of 2009, it was put forward earlier this year, it's a bipartisan bill by Senators Jay Rockefeller, a Democrat of West Virginia, and Republican Olympia Snow of Maine. It would allow the president, as you mentioned, to declare a cyber security emergency and to do what's necessary to respond to that emergency, including taking control of the internet if he feels that's the right thing. Uh, what the NSA is, in, is intending to do is nothing more than a, uh, a sort of 1984 George Orwell type uh, surveillance. They now want to build a cybersecurity army. The House passed a bill to recruit more cyber warriors and to start a new agency to deal with the growing alarm over the United States' vulnerability online. But it sparked concern that this may infringe on people's privacy. Bottom line, we have the former head of cybersecurity last year saying it's a takeover of the Internet. We have the White House saying they may shut down the Internet during emergencies. This is a pretext. This has nothing to do with true cybersecurity. This is censorship. This is control in the White House's own internal documents. So they use the excuse of outside threats as a way to come in and try to shut down the Internet that our country created. So cybersecurity, according to the former head of it, who valiantly resigned, is a uh, Orwellian police state takeover uh, of the internet because the people are communicating with each other and exposing the corruption and saying no to the fraud. This document details how the government is trying to take tighter control over the internet, all in the name of national security. The Cyber Security Act of 2009 outlines how the government wants to protect their information. But in Section 18, it says the president would be able to order the disconnection of any federal government or United States critical infrastructure information systems or
war networks in the interests of national security. And it says the digital dictatorship and an image of a man with barbed wire wrapped around him as he sits in front of his computer. It's fashionable to hold up the Internet as the road to democracy and liberty in countries like Iran. But it can all be, also be a very effective tool for quashing freedom. If you can control the Internet, if you can control the web, if you can control what somebody sees, prevent them, make it much easier to get them to the, to the website of one political party rather than another one, make it difficult for them to look at sites which are the wrong side of the, from your point of view, as an ISP of the, the abortion debate, no, uh, then, then that's, very, that's a very, very powerful tool. Also, if you can spy on everything I do, if you can spy on the clicks I make as I browse through the web and what comes back, you know a lot more about me than if you had a camera set up permanently in my living room. The Internet, to me, is the uh, political equalizer of the age because uh, uh, we who use the Internet a whole lot and the young people who like it and others find out that they can get information that is unbiased and uh, evidently there's a lot of people in this country and especially young people who don't particularly like KN News. President Obama is director of national intelligence. Admiral Blair, who I greatly respect, have labeled cybersecurity perpetrated through the internet as the number one national hazard of attack on the homeland in West Virginia, uh, on, in West Virginia, in America, or anywhere else. So, I mean, it really, it really almost makes you ask the question, would it have been better if we never invented the Internet and had to use paper and pencil or what? And the only way we're going to win is if we have millions of people continue to get involved, to raise their voices, and to demand better media. Because if we don't, we're going to lose, and the corporations will seize control of the Internet and the future of the media for generations. Well, I don't know, I think some people are too scared or something. I think things can be different. But I guess it's hard for some people who are so used to things the way they are, even if they're bad, to change. And they kind of give up. When they do, everybody kind of... kind of lose.